there are 10 times more people online today than there were 15 years ago. There are 10 times more business done online today than there was 10 years ago. And there's 10 times more startup companies than there were 10 years ago. Software is eating the world. And the future leaders of tomorrow will be the startup founders of today. And though this elusive industry might seem very far away, it's actually much closer than you might think, even right here in Sacramento. And I'm here to share with you some of the lessons I've learned over the last two years working in this industry in the hopes that you might be able to convey this story to some of the loved ones in your family. Growing up in Florida, I'd always been an entrepreneur. From the days when I used to buy soft drinks at Costco and sell them at my dad's softball games, to running candy sales at school, our hustling bootleg CDs in the hallways. I used to run casino nights at my parents' house when they would leave town. <laughs> and I can tell you, the house always wins. <laughs> but no matter what entrepreneurial venture I went through in Florida, I would always find trouble trying to scale it bigger than myself. I would always have trouble trying to make it bigger than I knew. I would try to integrate technology in a way where my companies would grow, but I didn't understand the development process, I didn't understand developers, and I didn't know how to tell the difference between the good and the bad. So at the ripe age of 27, frustrated, not knowing what else to do, packed my bags, got in my car, and went all the way out to Silicon Valley. I wanted to get closer to the home of technology. I wanted to understand the startup game. Only when I arrived, the pearly gates weren't open. There was no one there waiting to greet me. Big surprise, I had no idea where to look. And I would go to events day and night, and I would find the same thing over and over again. I would find a bunch of business guys like myself running around looking for developers, talking about the ideas they wanted to create, much like I'm sure a lot of us have. I was looking in all the wrong places. And then I found hackathons. So picture this. You walk into a room, and there's hundreds of people clicking away on their computers, developers pushing code, Designers making mock-ups, entrepreneurs doing PowerPoints, Nerf bullets fly through the air, Red Bull cans and empty plates scatter the tables. People are having fun, but tensions are high because these teams will have 24 hours to build prototypes that they'll present to investors for the chance to win investments. This is a hackathon. This is a modern-day startup competition, and these are my people. Once I had experienced the joy of a hackathon, I realized you know, they call it a hackathon because people are hacking. People are building new prototypes really, really fast. They're, they're problem solving along the way. They're hacking solutions to problems they don't know if they can create. And I realized this was happening not just at the event I went to, but it's happening everywhere. It was happening all around me. It was happening at the startup companies that I wanted to work for. It was happening at the conferences that I was trying to sneak into. And it was getting written about on tech blogs. People were talking about them in cafes. People were even putting stickers of the hackathons they went to on their computers as a, a badge of honor. And it was at that moment that I realized that I wanted to start a company that would do hackathons around the world and share this experience, that team building experience, that bringing the community together experience in the startup industry that I was experiencing in Silicon Valley, and I wanted to export that everywhere. So over the last 12 months, I've been lucky enough to get to travel the world. I've done hackathons in New York and DC, in Seattle and Austin, in Toronto, Santiago, Bogota, Seoul, Bangalore, Bangladesh, Bangkok, <laughs> Singapore, Jakarta, Manila, and everywhere in between. And what I realized as I went to all these, these different cities and did all these different events and learned all these different startup communities, I, I realized they were, they were different than us, but they were so similar. And what's happening all around you is the startup community is booming. The startup industry is booming, sometimes doubling year over year. And everywhere I went, people were young, excited, proud, living their dream, and I realized that there were also some cultural norms, some rules of the game that seemed to permeate through all these communities. And I'd like to share these rules with you today because I think the next time someone in your family might ask you for career advice or be curious about working with someone in the startup industry, this will give you a little bit better insight into how it works. So rule number one, give 100%, 100% of the time. People in startups are running, not walking. It is the story of David versus Goliath, and they're going into an industry that they're the little guys, and the only way they can win is by outworking and outthinking their bigger competitors. I think they're some of the most hardworking people in the world, comparable to 
consultants, investment bankers, and any of the top jobs you would see out there. So to win at the startup game, whether it's here in Silicon Valley or in Manila, you got to hustle. Rule number two, nice guys finish first. Startup world is small. The same people who are your competitors today could end up being your best friends tomorrow. They could end up being your coworkers. They could be the guys who buy your company out. People in startups are able to move mountains to achieve their goals. And the more and more connections you have along the way, the easier it gets. So this is an industry where being good is good. And rule number three, and the most important rule, and the thing that most people have the most trouble with, is that in technology, you have to learn to respect the code. You have to learn that the engineers and the ones building the tech are the ones in the front seat. Those who can code do, and those who can't sell. <laughs> and I think this is best explained with the story of Errol. See, Errol grew up on the East Coast. He was a, a great student, a fun guy, a frat kid. And when he graduated, he got a nice, cushy sales job at a tech company. And he was doing great, and it lasted for about a year. But over time, he started to realize this changing dynamic, this paradigm shift in his life, where he would never be in the front seat of that car, where he could only go so high. So frustrated by the limitations in this changing world, he quit his job and learned to code for the next three months. Then he went to New York's biggest hackathon. I was there, and that's where I met Errol. And I was there to see him use that 100% of the time, 100% of the time work ethic as he coded through the night to build a new product that he wanted to see if he could build. And I was there to see Eric be the nice guy and make friends with new people in the community and showcase himself as a coder and find new teammates. I was there at 8 a.m. in the morning when tired and jittery and Red Bulled and coffeed out and not knowing what's going on, Errol wanted to go home. And I was there to console Errol and remind him that he was a coder now, that this industry loves technology. <laughs> and that we respected what he built. And he should show it, because it's going to be awesome. And I was there Sunday afternoon when, with tears of joy in his eyes, Errol walked out with a first place trophy at New York's largest hackathon for the first app he ever built. That was six months ago. And Errol called me last week to tell me that he just raised a million dollars for that same company that he started at that hackathon. And I was there to congratulate Errol and welcome him back to the front seat of the car. Working in startups, it's not rocket science. It's not too far-fetched for any of you here today. You just have to know the rules of the game and where to get involved. So the next time someone asks you for career advice and what they should do with their life and their future, I hope you can share with them the stories today. Tell them about an industry that's changing the world. Tell them about an industry where you can go from an intern to a VP in a matter of months and build a billion-dollar company in a matter of years. Tell them about an industry with opportunity that is against recession, that's changing the future, and where they can have impact in the world. Tell them about an industry where they can make a dent in the universe. It will be the best advice they ever get. Thank you.